What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be checking out the demo for a title that I've been very, very excited about. A little game called Road to Vostok, which is looking to challenge Stalker and Escape from Tarkov in single player format style. Oh, there's a guy over there. We got him. It's okay. Uh, this game is looking to create like a single player Tarkov experience with gun modding and open world kind of extraction style looting where you can pick things up and put them back into your base for when you die and lose all of your things. And it's one that I've had my eye on for a while. They put out a little demo a while ago and that little demo was fairly ba- Oh my god, I just got mag dumped by whom I don't know, but it hurt. Was he in the window? Oh my god. Okay, where is this guy? I don't know where he's at. Is he shooting from down there on the lane? Doesn't look like it. I got a busted leg though, which is unfortunate. Let's go ahead and run a med kit real fast. That'll put our health back up. Get us back into good shape. But this is one of those games that they had a limited demo out a little while ago. Where mostly you could just kind of like walk around. And there were no bad guys. There was no enemies. There was really no loot. It was just testing out the technology. Where is this dude? This is not a fun feeling, but I've been told by my friends that are Marines and in the Army and whatnot that this is effectively what combat is like. Like, where the hell is he? Did I hit him? So on and so forth. This looks like he was winging shots across that corner right there. Maybe coming from the right. He might be in the bushes or something over there. It's kind of hard to say. The enemy could fire through grass and whatnot. But the game is looking to challenge Tarkov kind of on a single-player front. There's gun modding. You can investigate your weapons and things just like you can in Tarkov. And as somebody that's got a lot of hours in live Tarkov, probably around 3,000 hours in live Tarkov and probably three or 4,000 in SPT Aki, it quickly becomes one of those games that I'm very much looking forward to. So I'm not getting busted at from right here. Let's move up a little bit. But this demo is now publicly available, and this time around it has weapons, it has gun modding, it has a lot of the fun things that people look for in fact. Okay, he's inside the window over there. I see him. He's inside the window. He's got better shots on me than I have on him, though. Let's get to, like, a better firing position, I think. Let's get low over here. I need a better angle on him, though. Hopefully nobody tries to flank us from the left. I think we got him. I think he's down. Sometimes the enemies, the AI right now is still a work in progress. This is very much a tech demo to show you off what the game is playing around with. Unfortunately, I've got another wound. The UI on the bottom left, entirely too small. That's one of the first things I noticed about the game was that the bottom left, the little meters down there, I can't read the text. They're too little. I mean, it says like HLT, energy, hydration, but you got to really look at it to see it. Uh, you can tell if there's something on a loot container because there will be a little plus Next to it, when you open it on up, hey, we got ourselves a little blicky over here. Yeah, 74U with the wire stock. All right, now we got a real boy gun that we can play around with. Let's go ahead and throw this thing on in here. How's the rear sight looking? Is the rear sight okay? Eh, the bead's a little bit small on it. We're definitely going to want to pick up like a B-13 mount or something like that to try to get an optic on this thing, I think. That crate right there, it has a Santa jacket. Okay, sure. I look like a mixture of Santa and Master Splinter right now, but I'll take it. And then I've got myself like a little, I've got myself a little woolly cap too to keep myself warm. Oh, there's more guns over here. Hold up. Okay, so the PU scope and ooh, a 1911. That's what's up. Right now, there's no different ammo types in the game. There will most assuredly be different ammo types once this game gets further on into development. There will also be little features missing that you're going to see as you play through the demo. Uh, where, like, for example, you can't unload the bullets out of a gun. Uh, those are all things that are to be determined and haven't been put in the game just yet. But once again, keep in mind, this is a tech demo to show off what he's done by himself already, all by his lonesome. And, oh my god, he's like right in my ear. There we go. We'll drop him right there. He's down. There's also no ragdolls or anything in the game just yet, but they're coming. Uh, let's go ahead, and I'm glad that he flanked around, though. That makes my life a little bit easier. There's something in the freezer. So we've got a windbreaker. I'm going to go with the black windbreaker because once the sun starts to go down, it's going to give us a lot. I'm role-playing this thing, all right? I'm desperately trying not to silhouette myself in all of these engagements. we got a cabinet right there that's got a book, some matches, and a can of meat. 
Okay, we've also got duct tape, a hoodie, and a fleece. I'll go ahead and take the duct tape, I guess. We need to run another med kit on ourselves, which kind of sucks because our injury's draining our health off right now. There we go. Injury's been fixed, and we should be all good to go. I don't know if I lose, so this has 30. Let's see if I lose all the rounds when I reload. I haven't tested that just yet. Nice reload animation, though. Looks like we don't lose the ammo when we reload. I really like that reload animation. It's got kind of like a wrist flick to it that's kind of realistic, like a wrist jitter. Let's check this guy over here for anything he might have on him. I'm kind of like scared to loot out of cover, though. Oh, he's got a bunch of goodies. Uh, we don't want to run the, the 870 is tempting, but don't run the 870 right now. The 870 is bugged at the moment. Like, I think if you press control with it, it like bugs out. And so we're going to keep it for selling, but we're not actually going to run it. Uh, we got some crates over here. Nothing inside of them. What are you? Can I pick you up? I can. It's a lemonade soda. I like a little bit of sparkling lemonade. That's not bad. Throw some sparkling lemonade on down the gullet. We've got a book on fishing. We can't, like, read books or anything right now, but you can kind of tell that the books are going to, like, fill in for some kind of skill system that the game's going to have later on down the line. Now, you can definitely tell that that's planned because they all have labels and things like, you know, fishing book. Uh, medical book, stuff like that. You can interact with pretty much everything in the game. You can open up car doors. I was actually really surprised when I was playing the game earlier to find out that I could open up the sliding door on a panel van on the side. I thought I could open up, only open up the front two doors. Oh, God. Okay, I saw him right when he started shooting at me. There we go. We'll drop him real fast. He's down. Give him the, give him the old flickies. Call forth all of the... Is that a guy right there? I don't think that's a guy over there. I think that's a shadow. You get paranoid in this game. Uh, the sound design is not quite where it needs to be just yet. I can wear jeans. I kind of like I kind of like these joggers that I've got on right here, though. Like, I would wear those in real life, dude. Those are actually kind of hype. Wear those with, like, some Vans slip-ons or, like, some Pumas, dude. You'd be looking good. You'd be looking fresh when you go outside. All right, what's inside the barn over here? We got a dead guy with nothing on him. We've got a winter jacket. We've got some gloves right there. I'll definitely take those just for the operator credibility so that I can look cooler. Let's go ahead and throw a new reload on into the old AK-74U. I don't hear anybody walking around in here, so I don't think anybody's actually in. Is that a VSS? Oh, buddy. That's like one of my favorite guns in the entire world. Make me really regret putting bullets into the AK-74U. All right, we'll, we'll mag dump the rest of this thing into someone or something, and then we'll use the VSS uh, because, ooh, nice medicine. I need one of those. That's good. We've got some work gloves. We've got some toilet paper. I don't know if the game is going to be realistic enough that I need to wipe my ass after you poo. Otherwise, you get, like, an itchiness debuff that, like, makes you perform more poorly. Got some matches and some medicine right there. We got another pot of meat right there. We've got a hey, ammo, an ammo box with zero ammos, though. Huh, interesting. There's going to be weird little bugs inside of here. Like I said, it's like a tech demo to shut, like, it's kind of like what you would send out to shop for, like, publishers and see if anybody wants to be, like, funding the game effectively. At least that's how I've been thinking about it. But it's still, I, I can't express that enough. It's still very, very early days for this game. Eh... Yeah. The jacket would be cool, but we've got, like, the all-black thing going on right now, which I think is going to work, like, long term. Matches are important. Let me get some ma Do those stack? They do not stack. I don't know if I need many boxes of matches in order to be good to go. If I ignite that, do I lose a match? Doesn't look like I lose a match. I was wondering if it did the same thing that Stalker does. Uh, we need energy and hydration. I'm going to eat this pineapple can right here and just kind of like graze for a minute. Eating animations and whatnot are not in the game yet. Uh, this developer actually, after the Unity debacle, spent like the last year completely remaking the game in Godot after Unity kind of shit the bed and did a bunch of very, very developer unfriendly things. And so actually, I'm kind of surprised how well it's running right now for... I don't really think of Godot as like a, a photorealistic first-person shooter engine, I guess. But then again, I never thought of Unity as that either, and then Tarkov happened. So it looks like if you're creative and talented enough, you can do just about anything with any engine. I think we've got enough food. Can I throw an optic on this? Oh, nice, dude. Oh, cool. He's actually got like the little, the little cobra dovetail 
that you can throw on the side of there. I was wondering if they were going to go for the B-13 mount, which mounts, if you look at the gun, you see this little knobbly wobbly right here? There's like a little B-12 or B-13, I forget the number, but anyway, it's a little flat mount that goes on top of that thing, and then you put an optic on top of it. Or, these have a dovetail on the side, and a lot of Russian guns have like these strange contraptions in order to take like a gun from the 70s and get an optic onto the top of it. Usually called like Cobra mounts or something like that. Inside the cat, 20 bullets. Definitely need 20 bullets. 20 bullets is really, really good. Ammo is kind of in short supply in this demo from what I've seen so far. We've got another Makarov right there. So anytime I pick up ammo in this game, I'm like really excited about it because you don't see ammo very much and a 20 stack is huge. Uh, it looks like we've got a car battery. It looks like we've got a Aimpoint Pro right there. Is that a Glock? Oh, nice, a G17, dude. I'll definitely take the G17 over the 1911 for sure. I'm one of those weirdos that's a big Glock fan. I like Glocks a lot. I think they're really, really great pointing guns. I think the ergonomics on them are just utterly fantastic. But they're gonna. I'm five foot nine, and I have a smaller hand than most people. And so some people have pointed out that that's why I like Glocks, where if you're like six foot four and you have like a huge hand, the Glock is not as comfortable to play around with. But I'm a big fan of Glocks. Some of the generations are better than others. Like, there, there's good generations and bad generations. So before you buy a Glock, make sure you've researched what gen of Glock you want to get because the manufacturing is better on some of them than others. But from here, as you can see, they've got zones marked for right now just to easily guide the player. I've already gone that way. It leads to, like, a minefield and, like, a military base, and it gets spicy. It gets very, very spicy. Also, watch out for landmines and claymores and stuff while you're running around. If you see a terrifying square object on the ground that looks like murder, there's a pretty solid chance that that's exactly what it is. All right, well, the camp had like a 15 round box of ammo in it, so I'm pretty pleased with that. Let's go the other way. Oh my God, I'm being shot at again. Uh, he could be firing through the bushes over there. It's kind of hard to say. As of right now, bushes don't block sight collision for most of the AI. I don't blame it. Tarkov still has that, and Tarkov's been out for like 100 million years. And all of the mobs in Tarkov can like aimbot you through bushes and weeds and stuff. So, for an early game. It sounded like it came from the right. Am I crazy? Oh, there he is. I saw him. There we go. He was hiding in the bushes. He was being all stealth assassin style. I'm going to check him for ammo real quick, though. Uh, no ammo, but he does have a medicine box, which will help heal some of the wounds that we've taken. I'm going to drink the can of soda real fast, and then we'll head on over to the shipyard. I don't know if he was a respawn or what. Sometimes you start in that big red building over there. Sometimes when you step outside, you instantly start taking fire from, like, every direction. So I think in a lot of ways, the mobs can be in random places. So be very, very careful when you first leave the building. The, the mobs are also not going to shout or, like, announce themselves or anything. They're just going to mag dump you, like, the second you step out. Uh, because, you know, that's not a real thing, being like, Hey, I'm over here shooting you. People are just going to shoot you. Okay, so with the shipyard over here, let's move. Let's stay in cover, I guess. I'm not trying to... Oh, there's a sniper on top of the... There's a sniper on top of there. I see him. Someone inside, too. I don't know if I can jump high enough to get on top of this. I can't jump high enough to get on top of that. I hear him. I can't tell if he's upstairs or downstairs, though. I think we got him. I don't think you can vault through windows or anything yet. Oh, you can actually crouch jump through windows. It's a little janky, but it's a thing you can do. How many rounds do I have left? 19 rounds. I was trying to finish off this mag because we have a, we have a VSS, which is... A gnarly gun. If you don't know what the VSS is, it fires 9-0-3-9 rounds, which are effectively big, giant, subsonic bullets. This thing is like the peak of Russian gun engineering. This and the AS Val are just really fascinating firearms. They have an integrated suppressor. A gunshot from a VSS is like kind of like a finger snap in an empty, echoey room. 
very, very quiet, used for assassinations. It was for special forces and for the KGB, and so it's used for assassinating people effectively. And so it's more or less silent. It's got bullets that can basically penetrate just about ar any armor you can think of. Uh, it's subsonic, which means the bullet doesn't snap when it goes past your head or goes past you, so you don't even know you're being shot at. With a red dot, I don't know if this is a good idea. It's okay, we got him. I don't like having a red dot when I'm firing on people that are silhouetted in the sky. It makes them very, very difficult to see the red dot. I actually prefer irons for when I'm making a shot like that right there in most games. Just because the dot kind of fades into the line of the, line of the sky and the sunlight, it'll get you into trouble. And we got some books and a fleece over here. There are vendors and traders in this build. I haven't found them yet. Uh, I've been playing around with it for about probably 40 minutes prior to the recording of this video, and I made it like three or four zones in to this two-zone run that we've been doing right now because I have to narrate everything. Uh, but I made it about four zones in to where the zones were starting to have like a red skull rating that would flash when you logged in. And it got ugly. It got ugly. Oh, I've got shoes! Yay! Hooray for me! Nine bullets. Hell yeah. And a tourniquet? I'll take that. You never know, dude. You never know. Mini fridge over there. I have to express to you how much I'm resisting the urge right now to press the R key and reload my gun. It's like every fiber of my being is telling me to reload right now, but since I can't get the bullets out of the mag once I reload, just due to the limited nature of the demo, I don't want to put any more bullets into this guy because I want to swap over to the VSS. Nothing really to write home about inside this building. There was an old 1911 under a mattress, but that was about it. I don't know if we can get roof access from here either. It looks like they've got scaffolds and stuff set up. There we go. We'll just waste him real quick. I was trying to nail the headshot on him, but he's basically a black dot on my screen right now. There we go. We got that one too. How are we looking on ammo? One shot left? That's fine by me. Let's go over to the VSS. Hello, beautiful. Can I do anything with you? Oh, cool. They've got another Cobra mount over here so that I can put the, uh, the aim point on it. Nice. Hell yeah. That'll work. That's the good stuff. And now that we're suppressed... We should be able to, like, engage in gunfights and not get ourselves into too much trouble. Can I open up these shipping containers? You can. Love it. Like that detail. Shipping containers kind of, like, are never openable in video games. Have you ever noticed that? You can never open shipping containers in video games, and I've always wondered why. What are you? Antibiotics, actually. There was also a silencer in there that we could play around with. I don't know if I actually want to carry around all this stuff with me. I've got hiking pants over here. Let's go a little further into the facility and kind of see how this plays out. So we have cover on our left. Use that to sweep right. Get through the gap. Looks like somebody got got down at the end. Okay. Fair enough. Okay, he's somewhere. I don't know where he's at, but he's got a beat on us, all right? Uh, we're actually an upraised position is nice for sniping, but it also makes you a giant target a lot of the time if people know where you're at. An elevated position is only great if nobody knows you're there. After that, it's kind of like a silhouette yourself nightmare. Uh, let's go over here. Looks like they've got like a little camp inside the silo. It's kind of cool. Dead guy's got nothing on him. Dead guy's got nothing on him. Camp tent's got nothing in it. Okay. Looks like there's a loot crate up on the scaffolding up here. Let's go take a look at that. Loot crate. What you got going? Nothing all the way up here for it, huh? It's going to be hurtful like that. How bad is the fall damage, he asked? I don't know if I want to do it, man. Like, one gunshot lamed my leg well it looks like it didn't hurt that bad oh my god who is shooting I don't know who is shooting right there
let's just keep it tight for a second. Till we figure out who the uh, the trigger man is. Is it coming from the hills over there? I don't see anybody in the tree line, but for the love of God, somebody's busting shots at me. I'm a scared. I don't know who I'm getting shot at by right now, but I wish they'd go away. Move across to the tanks. Hopefully whatever's in here isn't flammable. I think water tanks would be the ideal situation. There's a guy right there. There we go. We got him. He hath been zapped. Give me a reload. Oh. I don't know where I got hit from. I got hit from somewhere. Hit feedback definitely needs a lot of work. Uh, like, getting tagged with just, like, the red flashes or whatever feels kind of cheap. Doesn't look super great. Cold medicine. Sure. Uh, let's put a bandage on, I guess. Looks like a bandage gives you, like, 20 health, so that'll work. I also need to eat and drink real fast. So let's eat a can of meat. Right, hydration's gonna be a little bit of a problem. Do I have any drinks? I got one lemonade left. So we need to prioritize picking up drinks, I think. I think that's gonna be something we wanna keep an eye out for, water bottles or whatever else. There's gotta be a guy, he shot through that gap over there, so I'm thinking he's in the hills over on that side because he was winging shots at me when I was on the other side of the silos as well. Oh. Ow. There we go. Stick your head out, man. I mean, let me give you a little present. Let me give you a little love and touch and squeezing. We got some gloves in here and a bunch of pallets. Let's go check the body real quick. You got anything? Oh! There he is. There we go. Dropped him. All right. I do like that the enemies actually, like, engage from realistic engagement distances. I know it's probably not super entertaining for a YouTube video, but you guys are watching me shoot at little black dots on the horizon, but, like, I have buddies in the army and whatnot, like, in the rangers and things that, like, actually did, like, combat deployments, and they were like, you would be shocked. How much of a firefight is just being like, where are the shots coming from? And then from there... Not even knowing if you hit the guy once you know where he's at. Like, the entire squad just dumped a bunch of rounds at him. And you're not, like, seeing anything over there. But you're like, did we get him? Did we get him? Like, somebody's got to go over and check. Or you just got to, like, wait and see. It seems very, very stressful. I was never in the army and never did any of that stuff. So I wouldn't know. But I've been told that by buddies of mine. That combat is a weirdly unpredictable situation where you don't always know what's going on. We got another one over here. He's down. I don't know where the transition's gonna be on this zone. I'm just kind of like looking around for loot or anything that might be useful. It'd be cool if some of these little houses had like secret bunkers in them where you go down some stairs and there's like a facility or something. That'd be rad. I'm 62 jacket. I don't know how I feel about digital flora right now. I kind of like this uh, masked gunman like bank robber thing that we've got going on. I think there may be respawns, too, because I keep finding guys in areas that I feel like I've already cleared. Drop them real quick. I haven't checked the body over here anyways yet, so we're going to habeas corpus this ass and see if it's got anything for me. You can't take their guns, by the way. It's just like they've got scav guns, kind of like in Tarkov. Their guns always have, like, 4% durability left. I don't know if gun jams or anything else like that are implemented yet. Yeah, it looks like they wander into the zone, is what it looks like to me. So they come from the transition points. Uh, he's in the bushes back there, and I don't have a nade to flush him out with. I was headed back to the village so that we could go the other way. Get ourselves into a bit more trouble. I don't see the guy, so I'm just going to make a break for the zone exit. Like, I think he's camped out in the bushes over there. To the village! Hopefully I don't have to clear out the entire village as we go back through here either. I'd prefer to save the ammo. Since we're going to be trying to work in the other direction and make it to, like, 
the Prapor. Or like the Sidorovich of this setting. Like the guy that's got his eye on the money and money on his mind, you know what I mean? So far, nobody's winging shots at me, so that's always a pleasant day. Any day where you don't get shot at, man. Just like Grandpappy used to say. Okay. Let's break into cover real fast. Anything inside the car? Nope. I don't see anybody, but let's kind of weave our way between cover here. We want to, like, move obfuscated as much as possible. Oh, I saw him right as he fired the shot. All right, he's down. I think that was five shots. Seven shots. I'm bad at counting my shots. Anything in the back of the semi? Right now I could use anything that restores hydration, so... I keep pressing F to pick things up, but it's on middle click in this game. Since we're in cover, uh, let's go ahead and eat some peas real fast. But yeah, all the text is kind of too small. You're definitely going to want to have pop-up boxes that tell you what these objects are, along with a history of the object, and, you know, like a little brief description. Uh... The text in the bottom left is way too small to be readable. I don't know if the game will let you resize the UI. I don't think that we can resize the UI for right now, but that would be a good decision to get that little bottom left menu to be a little bit larger because on a 1080p display, I'm getting a lot of like blurring and whatnot on it from it just being too small for the pixels to display properly. And then from there, I mean, you just have to... This is a game that's currently in like pre-alpha, effectively. But the developer took the time to put out this demo... Uh, to give you a taste of the gameplay and see if you like it or not. I like what they've got going on. It's very, very clear that it's early days. It kind of reminds me of the very, very early days of Tarkov back in like 2016, 2017 when they were showing off their first beginning alphas. Oh, there's a guy up there on the bridge. I see him right there. You just walk left to right behind the signboard. Ugh, if he makes it onto the bridge, that's, can I get up to the bridge? I wonder if I can get up to the bridge. Nobody back here in the tunnel. But I like what they're playing around with. It's very, very clearly early days for this. This is obviously still a game that's very much in, like, hardcore pre-alpha development. But this is promising. I don't hate it. I've played 1.0 releases that were worse than this. Especially in this genre. So, like, you know... Looking forward to it. If this is the amount of improvement between Alpha 1 and Alpha 2, where Alpha 1 didn't even have enemies and it was just like one zone that you could walk around in and there was no loot, and you were basically just testing the movement and the lighting effects, and like you could shoot the guns a little bit, but there was nothing to shoot at. This is quite an improvement compared to... Oh my god. I would like to be behind the rock of safety. Rock of safety left for me. I will hide up in your beehole. I see him. Well, that guy's kneecaps are not going to be in the greatest condition. That wasn't my best round of firing, but hey. I do like how when you reload, so there's a little detail here that a lot of games miss. He actually racks the slide if you fire until the gun is empty versus... Nothing on you guys? All right. N versus uh, just, like, doing the reload animation the same every time. So he racks the slide if you fire the, the, the mag down to empty. We can actually get up on the bridge. That's pretty sick. All right. Oh, it looks like there's some more stuff over there, too. We're getting shot at from, like, everywhere right now, though. Anything in the panel van? I'm not trying to get too wild and crazy out here, but, like... I need ammo. We're kind of getting a little bit low on ammo. How many shots do I have left? So I have, like, a reload and a half left is the answer to that question. So we've got about 50 shots left. We're going to need to find some ammo boxes pretty quick, but this is Road to Vostok.
It's early days for this one, but I'm very excited about it. The developer is very active on Twitter and is, like, constantly uh, updating and, like, showing off videos and, you know, very, very in tune with the community. Very, very open to feedback and whatnot. Check it out. Go give your feedback. Go tell them the things you think they can improve because the game isn't even in, like, prologue state yet. You know what I mean? This is still something that's very much in the hypothetical stage where they're like, okay, and wouldn't it be cool to do this? And wouldn't it be cool to do that? But what they've hashed together is pretty fun. It's enjoyable. They get the AI tuned up, get it a little bit smarter, get the sound design a little bit better so you can tell directionality of shots a little bit easier. Uh, stuff from there. You get the looting and the taking ammo out of magazines all sorted out. Get the different ammo types. Basically, it's just incorporating all the stuff that made Tarkov rad. And if this is their first public shot at doing that, it's not terrible. I'll see y'all later.